Good evening, I'm meteorologist Bob Acanfrio with a Hurricane Irene update for Tuesday evening, August 23rd, 2011. I'm going to have the evening shift the next two nights here, so if you don't catch my stuff in the morning, um, hopefully you could catch them in the evening instead. Um, as of 5 p.m., we have maximum sustained winds of 90 miles an hour. We have central pressure 976 millibars and movement to the west-northwest at 9. Um, Irene weakened just a slight bit today, basically stayed about the same. Um, two things, a little bit more of westerly to southwesterly shear, combined with still the effects and probably some drier continental air coming off of the uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti there with a little bit of land interaction. Those two uh, things have contributed to not really getting uh, stronger today. Good news for the Bahamas, though, this is still a very formidable um, Category 2 uh, hurricane, so um, definitely nothing to uh, nothing to sneeze about here at all. And it looks like if you look at the satellite uh, imagery um, this evening, which I'll show you in a minute here, it looks like um, Irene's starting to get itself together again, and we could be on an uptick in strengthening here, on, unfortunately, through the Bahama, Bahama Island chain. Um, you can see the forecast track has shifted east today. Um, as I was telling you yesterday, the 0Z models last night and the 12Z models today were really going to be uh, the tail where Irene's ultimately going to go across the East Coast. Um, and we saw with that upper air data, all the models really coming into great agreement today. And um, so today was decision day for Florida. Florida, you're out of the woods. Irene's not coming. Basically, uh, for Florida, we're going to see some rough surf some beach erosion because high tides will be astronomically high this weekend um, well you know through Thursday and Friday and into Saturday as well we'll still get some residual effects from Irene um, so we could see some beach erosion um, wind maybe some gusts right along the coast about 25 30 nothing but a breezy day and we'll be on the dry side so actually I expect probably warmer than normal conditions across the peninsula of Florida and um, and hotter weather unfortunately just what we don't need after a long summer but at least we don't have a major hurricane knocking on our door same thing for Georgia um, as far as South Carolina goes I'm about ready to take you guys out of the woods just about I think it's uh, Irene's not coming to see you either um, I'm about ready to take you out um, the National Hurricane Center still has you a little bit in the cone here uh, from about Charleston you know to Myrtle Beach but it's looking, looking more than likely that Irene's going to pass well east of you. Maybe some tropical storm conditions uh, near the Myrtle Beach area to the border here um, would be all you would expect there. So breathe a sigh of relief, South Carolina. Now as far as North Carolina, we can't do that yet, especially from Wilmington to Hatteras. Really going to have to watch Irene carefully here. Um, by then, we could be looking at a Category 2, Category 3 storm right in that range there. It could be weakening a little bit as it gets closer to North Carolina. So we might be coming from a 3 to a 2, but still going to be a very strong system. And then, it's not going to be like some other systems that really curve out the sea. This baby's going straight up the coast. So um, really, really, for anybody along the Mid-Atlantic to Jersey, Delaware, Long Island, New England, um, come the weekend, especially moving into later Saturday, into Sunday, and into Sunday night, really, really, we better be making preparations all along the East Coast here, Mid-Atlantic to Northeast Coast for a hurricane. Really advise you guys um, very highly on this because uh, this is not going to hook out like this. This is coming up the coast. So even if it shifts a little farther east, Long Island and New England, you're still going to be in that zone. You guys stick out out here, as you know. So definitely, anywhere along this coast here, be very aware. This one is not going to make a quick hook out to sea like that. All right, so there goes through all of that. So again, uh, Georgia, Florida, nothing. South Carolina, you're basically out of the woods. Again, maybe extreme northeastern, uh, southeastern South Carolina here, Myrtle Beach to the border. Maybe tropical storm conditions, maybe. Um, I'm about ready to take you out of that soon, but we still got to keep you there maybe just for another day. And again, our shifting from Wilmington all the way up the coast, basically. We're going to go from Wilmington and then all the way up the East Coast with emphasis, of course, on, 
on the uh, Outer Banks and then right up the East Coast, you know, Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, Jersey, Long Island, and then New England, of course. Okay? All right, satellite view. Here's a uh, Irene right now, visible loop. You see an eye was starting to pop out today, maybe here, and then kind of disappeared a little bit, got a little cloud filled, a little bit of, again, westerly, southwesterly shear kind of holding back the intensity. But if you look at the color loop here in the last few uh, frames here, you can see some convection really starting to pop back up here. Um, so, you know, as Irene's starting to move away from Hispaniola here, um, we could see some slow but steady strengthening over the next 24 to 48 hours. Turks and Caicos starting to get hammered. And then this will move right up through central Bahamas and then the northwestern Bahamas. And uh, they're in for a long uh, couple days here across the Bahama Islands. Shear, and then here's that little bit of northwest, I mean, a little bit of southwest west shear around 10, 15 knots. And it's changed a little bit. You know, with that track moving farther east, it's because this trough and this weakness here is a little stronger. What that's going to do is actually create more westerly shear than originally thought. So that's going to hold Irene back. Um, could it still become a major hurricane here near the Bahamas? Sure. Is it going to become a Category 4? I highly doubt it. Could it come down to a Category 2 once it hits near North Carolina? Sure. So a little less on the intensity scale, but still a formidable hurricane. So please, don't, of course, don't put, take your guard down at all just because it's going to be a slight bit weaker. Still going to be a big storm packing a punch with some beautiful outflow. I mean, the outflow channel here to the north, northeast, west, you know, I mean, east, north there, I can't even, I don't even know my directions. Uh, northeast and east, just great outflow here. A little bit lacking on the west right now, and that's a little bit due to that shear right now. And again, this is where we're going. We had our first little short wave moving off the western Atlantic, into the western Atlantic, really opening up that weakness. We have our next guy right here. I'm going to show you here on the uh, satellite water vapor loop right here. Then another one in Canada. And these are going to continue to come down and keep carving out this trough along the east coast. And bam, there it goes. But not a big digging trough. Not one of these that's going to kick it out to sea, unfortunately. It's going to be a bend up the coast like this. So really a uh, east coast uh, screamer here. And uh, never really want to see these um, for the um, mid-Atlantic and northeast. And then here's the water vapor, and this is what I was talking about, the first weakness coming here. Here's that one I was showing you yesterday coming through the Dakotas. We even have another one here in Canada dipping down, and these are all going to keep creating this weakness, and you can see it right here. You almost could follow these clouds here, and this will give you a good indication probably where Irene's going to go. Just follow this water vapor loop. Irene can't go here now. There's this weakness right in here. Sure, this may lift up a little bit, but if you just follow these clouds, you can see this is where it's going to bend. So for those of you in Georgia, Florida, and even South Carolina are wondering, just watch the clouds here on the water vapor, and it'll really give you the direction where Irene's probably going to be going. So um, if you guys are wondering on that. All right, models, again, I told you today, they've come in great agreement. Even the GFDL, HWRF, they're actually the most western side here actually cutting through. But you can see the consensus now is actually has moved east of Hatteras. Um, National Hurricane Center officially is still just west of consensus and it's probably due to the GFDL and HWRF. They do have respect for those models so they're going to keep it. You see the GFS ensembles are all off the coast and if this happened it would just maybe affect New England or the Cape and miss everybody. So you know, there's still that possibility too. Um, my forecast, well here's Clark Evans too just showing the 18Z again. Same thing as I was showing you there. My forecast is more geared to the Euro. The Euro has been really performing very well with this system. Um, very well. And this is the latest from 12Z. Pretty much in line with the National Hurricane Center forecast currently. Where we're going to see a landfall possibly near, near the Cape and then straight up the coast. Again, that's where I'm thinking right now. Um, Will we shift even farther east? It's a possibility we may shift a little farther east. I wouldn't take that off the table. Are we coming back west? I highly, highly doubt it. We are not coming back west with this. If anything, we might slip even a little farther east, which would be great news for the Cape, but still wouldn't take um, 
you know, Long Island and uh, New England out of the picture. So that's where I'm thinking right now where we're going. Um, GFS, basically just about the same as the Euro, maybe a little farther east. And again, you could see raking right up the coast would be big trouble for Long Island and New England with that track. And that's a very good possibility right now. If it does miss the Cape by some chance, this baby's headed for Long Island and, and New England. So you guys up there, you better be ready. Uh, GFDL, a little farther west, but again, not as west as it's been. Again, making landfall um, near near Cape Hatteras and then right up the coast there. And HWRF, um, same thing. Cape and then up the coast it goes. So that's what we have for this evening. Again, my forecast track is pretty much in line with the National Hurricane Center. We'll go back to the Hurricane Center track right now. Um, again, liking this track a lot. It's pretty much in line with the Euro. South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, basically out of the woods. Again, maybe extreme uh, eastern South Carolina, maybe some tropical storm uh, conditions are still possible, but this may even shift a little farther east in time. And again, anybody up the east coast here, uh, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Jersey, Long Island, New especially Long Island and New England, please, please make your preparations now because... Um, you could be seeing a uh, Category 1, um, 1 or 2 hurricane, more likely a 1, uh, screaming up the coast here um, towards the weekend, most likely towards uh, towards the uh, Saturday, Sunday time frame. Well, that's it for this evening. Um, again, I'll have another update. Um, quick little um, Facebook uh, post in the morning, maybe some in my blog. My blog's at Weather Underground, wunderground.com. Look for Weather Guy 03. My blog is there. Sometimes I put little things in there. And Facebook is Robert, A-C-A-N-F-R-I-O. If I don't post videos, I usually post some information in the blogs and on Facebook. Uh, most likely videos will be coming out again. Um, if I can't get one done in the morning, it'll be in the evening again tomorrow. Um, have a good night.